I, I so appreciate the fact that you guys are supposed to be helping us be a better family, but you guys are putting stuff that's slanderous in there because it's definitely not true. And then nobody even asked me, nobody even approached me to be like, hey, is this true or not? And I feel like as part of your guys' job, you should be doing that instead of putting stuff in your court report that is not true and is slander. It's slander. I'm sorry. Okay, but so those are my those are my kids. And like for for you guys to put in a court report that we're not giving him his medicine, their medicine the way they're supposed to. It really does hurt my feelings because I try really hard to be a good mother. And when sure. you guys are putting stuff in the court report that is not true, really hurts my feelings. Hey guys, today we have a hearing where mom says that the court report is slanderous against them because it says that they aren't giving the medicine properly to the kids and she insists they are giving the medicine properly to the kids because the school is giving the medicine properly to the kids. Let's go. Light them. Ms. Saja Thomas, counsel for the department. Chelsea Grant for the department. Alexis Stang, attorney for the respondent father, Austin Dubey. Uh, Michael McFarland, represent the other father. Please introduce yourself. Jeffrey Grant. Did the court hear that? I did. Thank you. Okay, and I do know we have uh, Ms. Ariel Berger and Faith Double chatting at the moment. They are both here. And I'll be rejoining this show. All right, Ms. Heiss, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the court report is very thorough. It gives us a lot of medical information, a lot of uh, early on evaluations. Um, I see this case as we've been familiar with these parents for a while in, through different cases. And it looks to me like with the department's eyes on the children, we're going to make progress and get some um, the little littlest one caught up on her uh, breathing issues. We're going to get um, JJ uh, fixed uh, by his counselor, who not only does IHT, but also sees him at Boys and Girls Club one-on-one. -on -one. Um, uh, that therapist at Parkside indicated that, um, you know, we don't suspect physical abuse, but the bruising and the rough and tumble uh, may need more supervision. So I think that's a different kind of a case than so that we can partner with the parents and make progress. Um, the therapist indicates that the children are growing up in an environment that is hostile, which could have uh, negative effects on the children. And um, this is an opportunity for um Miss Double, who has so many strengths, and um, I look forward to watching her accept this extra help, extra eyes on to um, perfect what all the kids need. There are some uh, reports that are some of the kids' needs, um, for example, for medication, you know, with four kids and a job and everything that's going on, um, it must be hard. But with the support, we can make sure that JJ gets his um, ADHD medicine uh, on time so that he doesn't disrupt um, Boys and Girls Club. Um, let me look here. Especially Aurora's uh, medical things. We need to uh, make sure that mom has the support she needs. Um, I'm hoping to have the family better organized by the time we're done with the case and uh, supports in place. Um, Possibly the domestic violence between one of the father, what well, both of the fathers maybe and mother support is what my my theme is. I observe the children, the three younger children at daycare, and um, they're very enmeshed in daycare. They're an important part of their friend groups. Um, there was a period of time, this review period, where the kids were missing, <laughs> were missing right. from daycare, which alerted the caseworker, and she got them right back into that. I'm sorry, she worked with mom who got the children right back into that structured environment where they're building relationships and they can have this consistent caregiving in a very, um, the environment looks very respectful to children. Um, okay, so I did not visit JJ face to face, but I'm really looking forward to observing him with uh, Chris, especially, but I think we this case is very hopeful that we can get where we're going. It's been a long time that we've had these loose ends, and I'm interested to see um, after Mr. Doobie's 
Dubai's um, treatment, how much better he can become. He's on probation. He's doing what he needs to do. So many good strengths in this family, but all together, it can be a mess sometimes because there just looks like there's so much to do. So I'm looking forward to the family getting better organized, which is crazy because Miss uh, Faith is very on top of a lot of things. It's just that um, when she turns her backs, the kids fall off their bike and get hurt at soccer and they um, rough and tumble, which is what started this case, rough and tumble. And the kids get a bruise and everybody needs to make sure that there's enough support in the family to reach all the goals. But I look forward to working as a cooperative team to get this family um, supported and all the kids need supported. So um, that concludes my report. Uh, the record should reflect we have been rejoined by Ms. Double as well as Ms. Berger uh, virtually, so welcome back. Ms. Thomas, how would you like to start? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm just considering our time. Um, I, I would just like to call parents first, um, with the understanding that I will keep questioning pretty brief, if that's agreeable to the other attorneys. Yes. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll ask Ms. Faith Double to be sworn in, please. All right, Ms. Faith, come on up to our witness. Let me bring her hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth is all you got? I do. Or is this under be careful? Good morning, Ms. Double. Good morning. Um, so I'm just calling parents first to allow them an opportunity to sort of share how they feel their last review period went, um, how they feel their progress in their case service plan has gone, and if there's still areas of need that the family has um, and you would like to work towards on the next review period. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it because I was actually just talking to my lawyer about that out in the hallway. Um, so one of the reasons why the kids sat out of daycare for so long is because first Braxton was having problems with his asthma and we were told by urgent care not to bring him back and well not permanently obviously but until his asthma got better and that's when he went with my friend um and then they caught head lice and so I had to take care of that before I could send them back to daycare. So them sitting out of daycare was not my fault to begin with. But I do want to. Um, so there is. I have been giving my son his medicine the way he's supposed to. Um, there was one time that his dad actually took his medicine up there because my car broke down. And it was at my cousin's house and I had no way of going up there to give him his medicine. But I also, I read through the whole entire court report and I wanted to say that I disagree with some of the, a lot of the stuff actually that was put in there. Um, like for instance, that I don't give my son his medicine the way he's supposed to and that it could disrupt his learning. I signed a paper with the school last year. The school has been giving him his medicine since last, since last year. And um, so the school calls me whenever they get low on his pills and I just take them more in. But nobody even asked me about that. Just, just so you're aware that I feel like that was somebody not doing their job properly um, because there's no proof that I was not giving my son his medicine. And like I said, I signed a paper with the school last year where they dispersed both of his medications to him in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, so I just want to clarify, are you responding to a sentence that states this and there's two sentences, um, Madeline reports ongoing concerns of the parents not meeting medical needs of the children. This includes treating the children's asthma and distributing, distributing medications appropriately as prescribed and following through on referral recommendations. And I have told Madeline several times that we give him, he takes two different inhalers. One starts, I don't know the exact names of them. One starts with a B and the other one is just, um, I forgot what the other one's called. Um, but the one that starts with a B, 
is supposed to be given to him in the morning and at night. Me and Jeff give him both of his doses and the albuterol, albuterol is, um, is as needed. And so we give that to him as needed. But the one that starts with a B, me and Jeff take turn. Well, more not, not like take turns, but we both give him the morning and the one he's supposed to go have before bedtime. And you, you understand that um, Ms. Grant is simply reporting what was told to her, correct? I, I just don't appreciate the fact that you guys are supposed to be helping us be a better family, but you guys are putting stuff that's slanderous in there because it's definitely not true. And then nobody even asked me, nobody even approached me to be like, hey, is this true or not? And I feel like as part of your guys' job, you should be doing that instead of putting stuff in your court report that is not true and is slander. It's slander. I'm sorry. Okay, but so those are my those are my kids. And like for for you guys to put in a court report that we're not giving him his medicine, their medicine the way they're supposed to. It really does hurt my feelings because I try really hard to be a good mother. And when sure. you guys are putting stuff in the court report that is not true, really hurts my feelings. Miss um, Double, I, I don't mean to um, just dispute that. I just am saying that the sentence uh, indicates that that's the care, that's the medical provider's concern. And, and she it. has no proof of that either. I've told her repeatedly okay. that he gets both of his doses and the albuterol as needed. Okay. And every time he's gotten any antibiotics, every time they've gotten any antibiotics, they, we have given them all of their medicines like they're supposed to. Okay. Um, and I know that there's some concern about uh, frustration for having to go through like the background checks for people who are providing care to the children. Yes. I did ask Chelsea. I sent her a message and I don't feel like I was being mean at all or I was being like out there at all. I just, I just simply stated that I, she's taking all of my support systems away from me and that Leona, I don't know if you guys are aware, the one that she tried to say is not fit for my kids to watch. Leona has 50, 50 of her own kids. So how could you guys deem her fit for her own kids, but tell, tell me that she can't watch mine. Sure. I think that's not a question you're probably are trying to answer for you. Okay. And also it's, I feel I kind of felt like you guys were picking and choosing who you wanted to be in their lives because like you have one person that Chelsea is saying that my kids are safe to be around, even though her kids have been in and out of foster care. And it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Um, all right. And I, I, I think that those can be answered with uh, like a family team meeting between uh, Ms. Grant, and if Ms. Uh, Berger can also join, that'd be a really good idea, I think. Um, otherwise, how do you feel like IHT is going and the in-home services that you're getting? I love Chris, and um, JJ absolutely loves Chris. I feel like he has definitely developed a bond with Chris, and um, it's going good. And you are still employed? Yes, <laughs> I probably put in about 50, 55, 68 hours a week. Generally, the court report is pretty favorable that you're compliant with all of your elements of your case service plan. Do you feel that that part is uh, accurate? The case service plan? Yes. Yes. I just did not like the court report. Um, and as it relates to contact with Mr. Juvie, are you still able to um, not have contact with him? But it seems that there's uh, through you're not allowed to have contact with Mr. Juby. Is that correct? Mr. Juby is not allowed to have contact with me. Okay. And there's nothing court reported saying that I cannot communicate with him. Mike is her boyfriend slash baby dad, and he committed some DV against her, and he has criminal charges, which we are going to hear shortly on in this case. Okay. And you're aware of the upcoming appointments for uh, the psychological trauma assessments and um, for the kids. Are you aware of those appointments? Yes, I got a planner actually. And I wrote all every single 
um, appointment down my planner. And I look at my planner every day when I wake up in the morning. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions at this time. Other attorneys may, though. okay. Thank you. Questions, Ms. Berger? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Stubble, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. You had indicated that in the court report there was uh, a reported incident of arguing at the pediatrician. Is that correct? That's correct. Can you explain that for the court, please? That was another thing that I disagreed with. Um, so Jeff had two of the kids at their pediatrician appointment. And um, we were talking over the phone. I don't know if he had me on speakerphone or whatever, but we were talking over the phone. And I was actually working at the time the kids were supposed to be picked up from daycare. And um, so he had already run over his appointment time the appointment time for the kids by an hour and we had figured that he would be done with the appointment their appointments before it was timed he should have been technically he should have been done with the appointments um before five but the um pediatrician was running behind apparently um but anyways um so we were debating not really arguing um, because every minute that is after five, we have to pay $2 a minute, um, for every minute after five. And we have three kids that are enrolled in the daycare. So that's really like $6 a minute, every minute that we're late. So I was trying to tell him that he should explain to the pediatrician that he has to leave to go pick up the other kids because in all reality, who can afford that? Okay. So was he able to leave then and go get them? Yes. He did explain to the pediatrician that he had to be at the daycare at five to go get the other kids. And I, he probably had to rush her a little bit, but we still got to the kids in time, but we, we weren't arguing. We were simply discussing um, who is going to go pick up the kids. Cause like I said, we were working and it's $2 a minute for every minute we're after five. Okay. And there was also mentioned in the court report um, an ASD evaluation for your son in Ann Arbor. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And can you explain the court, explain to the court a little bit more about that, please? Okay. So his pediatrician did send out a referral to DHS to have him tested. I took him into DHS like the pediatrician wanted me to. They sent. They sent me a letter stating that they could not offer services to him because they didn't feel like he needed them. And then she sent out a, um, a referral to a place in Ann Arbor to get him tested for autism. And when I called the place in Ann Arbor, they told me that they had years waiting list, years. And I went back to Dr. Madeline and I told Dr. Madeline what they had told me and she replied to me that she that she is not surprised and that she would try to figure out something else she never got back to me at all okay okay is there anything else that you want to add today uh i don't think so okay thank you i don't have any other questions for you but some of the other attorneys might still okay thank you mr mcfarland yes Talking to Mr. Patterson, isn't it true that you've had tubes put in your ears, in your ears when you're younger, and you yep. tend to project your voice loud, which might be misunderstood as argumentative, but it's just loud. Would that be accurate? That is very accurate. I had tubes put in my ears when I was, and this Chelsea says that I get loud sometimes. It's not really me getting loud. It's the fact that I did have tubes put in my ears when I was small, and I still can't hear right. Thank you. And you know that if you can't hear us, you can just let everybody know. Well, sometimes I do. And then sometimes Jeff will be like, really, you have to say the same thing three times. <laughs> yeah, you do, because I can't hear you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nothing further. Ms. Spencer? I have nothing. Okay. Ms. Heiss? No questions today. Thank you so much. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you for your testimony. We return to your seat. Thank you. Ms. Thomas, who would you like to hear from next? Mr. Patterson, please. That me, you could spare him, Mr. Jeffrey Patterson. Mr. Patterson. 
You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll be got it. Just step there. Uh, Mr. Patterson, you heard the questions that I asked. Uh, okay. And is there anything that you would like to state on your behalf as to how your portion of the case is going? I'm just waiting for my assessments for my psychedelic film assessment. Uh, we're just waiting for the dates so I can attend them. Other than that, it's just prepping and a lot of waiting. Okay. Um, and overall, your court report uh, as it relates to compliance with the case service plan is also pretty favorable. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Are there any concerns as it relates to the contents of the court report that you would like to explain? I don't think so. And you're aware of the date and time for your psychological evaluation as it's scheduled? Yeah. Um, and during this review period, you've been active with the IHT services? Yeah. Okay. And do you find those helpful for your family at this time? Of course. And is there anything you want to tell the court today? I don't think so. Okay, thank you. I have no questions. No, no further questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. McFarland? Yes, you and I have had a discussion that we would like a copy of the trauma assessments on the kid and your psychological report as soon as they're completed rather than waiting until the next review so that you can understand what's going on. Is that correct? Yes. You also heard Faith's testimony that you and her did not have an argument, just her talking loud. Would that be accurate? Yes. Okay. As far as priorities, do you think you understand what you need to do in what order and that's being accomplished? Of course. Any other, any concerns you might have? Um, no, maybe just that we uh, possibly uh, get it maybe a little bit more prioritized for the... Uh, so I will call them, I will ask the worker as you and I discussed and they maybe ask her the priority. No, no, okay. okay. I have nothing further. Ms. Spencer, any questions? No, nope, nothing. Thank you. Ms. Berger? No, Your Honor, thank you. Ms. Heights? Uh, Mr. Patterson, it wasn't clear to me in the court report. It looks like you're working full-time, that's right? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me what kind of work you do? Work at Martin Rea, fast base assembly tables, uh, clip cell with brake lines, fluid, and um, they do fuel and brake there. Okay, and then um, do you and Miss Double have um, independent transportation? She has a car, you have a car? Yes, we do. We have two cars. They're both in her name, but we share them. Are your services for this case something you can accomplish without missing time from work? Easily. I'll make There's time. Enough. Nothing further. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you for your testimony. You may return to your seat. You're welcome. Your next witness, uh, Mr. Austin Juby. Mr. Juby. Raise your right hand, please, sir. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, the truth, so I'll be back. I do. All right. Help us. How, what is the correct pronunciation of your last name? Juby. Juby? Okay. Uh, Mr. Duby, you've heard the other parents testify. Is there anything that you would like to state about your uh, side of the case? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, just I've been waiting for my psychic valve on the 5th at 3 o'clock. Okay. And then uh, I got to call on CMH today to get the other stuff set up. Um, what are the. Let me ask him to speak up just a bit. I have a fan. <clears throat> so. Did you hear? Do you want him to repeat? No, I, I could make it up. Okay, thanks. And you um, have indicated, in, at least for the court report, that you are or are going to be uh, attending AANA meetings. Is that correct? AA meetings. Okay. Um, have you been able to maintain your sobriety since uh, rehab and when you're discharged on June 26th? Of course. And 
you realize that you have to give a copy of your AA or any meeting logs to Ms. Grant? Yeah, but I haven't been to any, so I'll, I haven't been able to get it. I don't know where they are around town here, and my home groups are all in Ann Arbor. I don't have transportation. Okay. So a list of uh, local groups may be helpful for you? Yeah, I, I know there's one at the court uh, in, at, in the probation office downstairs. I just got to go take a picture. And currently, um, you are waiting for housing? Yeah, uh, transitional. But uh, if I can find my own place before that, I'm going with that. And are you yes. working at this time? Yeah, through uh, express staffing and to come see you. Have you participated in or engaged in any parenting time classes or parenting education classes? I'm sorry. Um, no, Chelsea told me she was going to group that with my supervised visitation. And as it relates to like the individual therapy, is that something that you're going to, is that what you're referring to by going to CMH? Yeah, I'm going to get individual therapy. I'll try to get back on my ability. Okay. It looks per prior court orders. Your parenting time was suspended back in October. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. And what is your position on parenting time right now? Do you is that something you're seeking? I wish, yeah, of course. I miss my kids every day. To the best of your understanding, what do you need to do in order to get parenting time back? I don't know. You guys tell me what I need to do, and then I do it. Um, don't want my kids service my something to. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the court? Not that it has already been said. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Um, also, did you remind me what happened with your criminal charges? You're on probation? Mm -hmm. And um, when did you enter a plea and start your probation? I entered a plea last uh, September because they weren't going to let me out of jail unless I did. So I took a plea of aggravated assault and a year of probation, $1,400 fines. But you were in jail at the time this was filed in April, no? Is that not right? Oh, uh, no, that's a different one. That's okay. with a whole other person. Um, <laughs> uh, that's with Dakota. Uh, Okay, so you're on probation for, you're still on probation for the one you just talked about. Is that right? Because it would have been- Yeah, yeah. they extended my original probation, yeah. All right, and then you had some fines. Is that through Lenawee County, the aggravated yes. assault one? Yes. That's what's got it, all right. Uh, what are the other terms of your probation? Mm -hmm. You drug testing, counseling? Yeah, uh, I drug tested. I got a drug test tomorrow. Who is your probation officer now? Uh, Liz Westgate. All right. Does Liz know uh, to release like your drug test results and some of those updates to the caseworker? I think she does. So she, okay, yeah. Next time you meet with Liz, will you let her know to talk with Ms. Grant or sign whatever releases you need to? Okay. That way you don't have to test it three different places. Okay. Right? It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can do that. All right, what other services are required for you on your probation? Uh, services? Um, anger management, which uh, I can do online. It's an eight-hour class. Have you started that one yet? Uh, yes, bits and pieces, but I haven't been through the whole eight hours yet. All right. Anything else? No. And then, uh, you, so you said there was another case? What's the other one? Okay, so there's an aggravated assault case from last year. Okay. Uh, and then there is a domestic violence case from this year. So that's where you were. 
did that new charge a violation for you when you're yeah, it was a violation, but they gave me 90 days suspended. Um, so I could go to rehab, and then I just. And is the domestic violence, the new domestic violence charge been resolved? Mm, no. When did you know? Uh, August 7th. Okay, thank you. Is that, what does that sound for? I'm not sure what time. Does it pretrial sound right? Oh, it's, I think it's an arraignment. Arraignment? Yeah. I don't think it's pretty trial yet. All right. Okay. Uh, keep Ms. Grant up to date on that. Yeah, please. All right. Uh, other questions for this uh, witness? Um, Ms. Spencer, would you like to start? Just briefly. Um, Austin, in the court report, it stated that um, the caseworker tried to contact you on 715 and 716 and hadn't heard back from you. I have a call out on my phone where I called her back. Okay. She didn't answer, and then I never tried to call back again, and I never received a call back, but I did end up seeing her the other day. She tried, she came out to the house and stayed. She okay. Somewhere. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, other than uh, the reason I didn't report the larceny charge is because uh, I heard about it two weeks before I even got out of rehab. So it's not like I could just pick up a phone and be like, hey, this happened. Okay. Um, but I, I should have reported it when I got out, but I wasn't thinking about all that. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. What's the large thing charge? It's, uh, I stole some money, uh, like 300 bucks. Are you on probation for that? No. Oh. No, I haven't even been in court for that. Okay. Well, then don't talk about it on the record. <laughs> well, I already admitted it to a detective. I got oh, me on recording, so. <laughs> They said they could have me out with like a payment plan. All right. So <laughs> that one's pending too. Are you, do you yeah. know when your next court date is for that? No, I have no idea. They haven't, I haven't heard nothing about it. Okay. Are there any other ones out there? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a handful of misdemeanors. Okay. Um, Mr. McFarland, any questions? None. Ms. Berger? No, you're good. Thank you. Ms. Ice? Just briefly, Mr. Doobie, do you yes. get the court reports before court? Um, yes. Okay, I was reading the one for today, and it said that you can't live with your mother because some kids live there. Is that right? Uh, well, yeah, because the kids go out there, yeah. Oh, like my kids the, go out there. These kids go to your mom, so that's why you can't live there? Yeah. They're not placed with her, though. They're placed with their mo their own mother, right? Yeah. What is your sobriety date? May 23rd. Don't we have a drug screen after that? Just um, looking here. Anyway. I mean, a positive one for... Uh, I've got here. Uh, when you say a clean screen, do you mean THC is a clean screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't okay. know. There's no right, method. <laughs> okay, got it. And don't we have a screen? Oh, May 23rd. All right. So May 23rd is your sobriety date. You are employed full time? Yes. And how do you transport? Um, do you drive yourself? Uh, I use my Lamborghinis. I walk. Oh, I thought you said Lamborghini, and I thought, wait. Um, <laughs> um, would you say that uh, the children's mom, Malachi and Braxton's mom, is mostly in charge of their medical, their daycare decisions, and that kind of stuff, or do you participate equally? Uh, she's in charge of all that stuff. Okay. We're going to have some reports done on your two boys, and... Um, I hope you'll take time to read them. Uh, will. will you look? Okay. And then you know that Malachi is um, being treated for speech, right? Yes. The he's last time you... Go ahead. Sorry. I was saying he's been in speech therapy for a long time. Okay. So you're aware of that. Um, the um, case where you have a provision where you can have no contact with Miss Double, which case is that? Is that a probation case or a bond? 
That is the aggravated assault case, the uh, probation case. So she has no duty to not contact you, but you have a duty to not contact her, right? Yes. So this court report is talking about communication between you two. Is this something we should work on if you need contact for the benefit of the kids? Absolutely. Which probation officer is in charge of that? No contact. Liz, Liz Westgate. Have you Liz been Gay. violated for contact with Faith? Um, yeah, but they, um, they gave me 90 days suspended. All right. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. Any redirect? No, you're on it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. We return to your seat. <laughs> Any other witnesses, Ms. Thomas? Uh, Ms. Grant, your honor. Ms. Grant? Uh -huh. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, all the guys. Good morning, Ms. Grant. Good morning. Um, as it relates to your court report with the several, you've included several attachments. Thank you for being thorough. Um, we've heard testimony from the parents, but from your perspective, are there any updates or modifications that need to be made to this report? Um, the one modification I would make is where I had written that Austin was attending um, Packard Health and his outpatient treatment through uh, New Vision. He did not report to any of that. Um, did move back to Runaway County. Um, I did have contact with him last week where um, I encouraged him to call and get an assessment through CNH or anything like that because his Medicaid is still active so that way he can get in services here and get a referral to one of the facilities around here to serve his outpatient. Um, otherwise, everything else uh, remains the same? Yes. Okay. And um, the children are placed with their parents other than Mr. Doobie's children who are um, not having parents in time right now, correct? Correct. What is the risk of harm of the court which release jurisdiction today? I think at this time, uh, the risk of harm would be that uh, I want to continue to provide the support and the follow through for the family. Um, I think that uh, the family is kind of, I should say specifically, Faith and Jeff are kind of doing things on their own, just need a little bit of direction. They've been cooperative, doing everything I've asked them to do. Um, I think it's just really putting that support um, so that Faith does not continue to have CPS in her life as she has had multiple times for multiple years and just wants to be a mom. And I think at this point, we owe her that due diligence to continue that support to put her and Jeff and even Austin here where they need to be. And part of the conditions that caused the court to take jurisdiction were in part um, generalized parenting skills, correct? Correct. I think there was some medical concerns. There was some medical supervision concerns. Okay. And no parenting classes uh, directed at that have started yet. Is that correct? That's correct. So the family right now is working with IHT for the dynamics of the home. Um, and when it comes with um, their communications and working with their children specifically in their home. And so an element of the parenting education is coming through IHG, correct? Okay. And um, it also seems by the report that there's sort of this way and see from the trauma assessments and the psychologicals, what more can be offered to the family to ensure that long-term stability? Is that accurate? Yes, I think so. I'll rephrase it. So it seems that there's also this... Um, but the department's also sort of waiting on the trauma assessments and the psychologicals to see what other services may be needed to ensure the family's long-term stability. Correct. So there seems to be a lot of discrepancies. So um, you have Faith and Jeff, who in their home specifically do not believe that there's any... Can you speak up a little? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, there's a lot of discrepancies. So you have um, inside the home, when you talk to Faith and Jeff, like they believe they just have normal arguments when you're looking at outside perspectives, service providers, um, family, fit of kin, numerous individuals, it seems a little more hostile than that. And then you have um, the kids where um, 
some some providers are saying that they have no developmental concerns, but then we have the medical provider who's having multiple, multiple concerns for the kiddos. Um, so I think the best direction at this point is to have the psychological, have the CTEX and kind of base um, conclusively off of those thorough and complete reports that takes any and everybody into account <laughs> and really determines what specifically needs to be worked on. And at this time, your report is asking that Mr. Dubiever be permitted to attend the uh, trauma assessment for the bonding component with his children. Is that correct? That is correct. And is that something that you're still recommending? I am. I'd like to see his behavior towards his children, um, his parenting or lack of parenting skills towards his children. Um, I still maintain concern over his drug usage. Um, even though he is reporting to probation weekly, he is very much aware that it is every Wednesday. They are screening him here at the facility instead of on colors um, due to the fact that he did not have the $20 that colors um, require. So he's being tested specifically here. Um, his drug of choice, we are aware that doesn't always stay in system for a long time. And there's been a lot of concerns that he is still using outside of that perspective. Um, Wednesday testing. Okay. And um, when this, I know that there was a uh, custody order that suspended his parenting time prior to our involvement, but this court's order supersedes those. And at this time, is there a recommendation for parenting time to change or are you still recommending it to be suspended? I would like to see the bonding reports from there. And um, based upon what those recommendations are, I would ask that we would have the discretion to offer him supervised parenting with a provider, whether that is Ms. Edwards or therapeutic, based upon whatever the bonding assessment recommendations are. Is there anything else you'd like to highlight for the court's attention today? I don't think so. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I have no further questions. And with that, I would move to admit the court report. No objection. No objection. No objection. Thank you. The court report as well as the exhibits are received. Cross-examination, Ms. Berger? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. McFarland? You heard my client would like some instruction as far as prioritization. Uh, can you maybe tell him where he should prioritize and maybe why? Yep. So right now we're going to wait for the psychological and the CTAX. The CTAX actually, I believe, start in two days. So um, I think his kiddos go first. So that would be a, um, a place for him to start. Um, and then from there, we are going to do a family team meeting with everybody. The problem is I was on vacation. Um, there was another provider that was on vacation. Um, so it's been hard to get everybody together. Um, I know that me, Faith, and Jeff had one, but I think it would be important to have all of the providers together. And that way they feel like they're on the same page as well. Um, and we're going to go from there. I am also trying to touch base with... Um, the medical provider and she has also been on vacation and it's been touch and go with trying to get a hold of her of what has and hasn't been completed for all of the medical concerns that she has to be addressed. So it sounds like the prioritization will occur at that family team meeting, if I hear yeah. you correctly? Yeah. Lastly, it would be possible for you to send to my client and to all counsel a copy of the trauma assessments and my client's uh, uh, psychological as soon as you receive the reports rather than waiting for the next review. Yeah, I typically do typically go over them with my clients. I'm not sure if other people do not do that, but I do typically as soon as I receive them, go over them with my clients. Nothing further, thank you. Yes, uh, just briefly. You stated that you had a family team meeting previously with you um, and the other two parents, but not Austin. Why was Austin not at that? I did have one with Austin. It was a few days later. They do have a no contact order. So okay. I was not going to violate that by putting them all together. Okay. And then um, I guess what harm um, or risk of harm is the department specifically concerned about with my client having supervised visits? If those were supervised, I guess, what risk of harm is there to be concerned about? So um, when the petition was first entered into the court, I guess we should say, um, the concerns in there were that his parenting time was suspended and that he was exhibiting, he was still watching the children and exhibiting inappropriate discipline that was causing marks and bruises to them. Um, according to what should have been accurate and then what was happening, he may not have been having contact with his children since um, 
back in October, but we know that to be inaccurate as he admitted that he had seen them since that time. Um, but the kids have not seen him. Um, so I'd like to make sure that there's a bond and there's no um, adverse reactions to the kiddos when they see Austin for that first time. And would you agree that there may actually be an adverse reaction or um, it could appear that that bond might not be as strong due to the fact that he hasn't been able to see sure. them? Sure. And that's something I'd like to address and work forward moving with the bonding assessment. Okay. So is it accurate then to state the only thing that needs to be done um, for on Austin's end, at least for him to be able to start that supervised contact is attending that um, bonding and trauma assessment with his children? That, and I'd also like to see him um, follow through on his recommendations from the substance abuse. Um, the recommendations were to finish without, you know, continue without patient, follow through those things, um, and maintain stability in that. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Is nice? No questions. Thank you. I can redirect. No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for your this morning. May we return to your seat? Any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, witness testimony today, Mr. McFarland? Nothing further. Spencer? Nothing further. Thank you. Ms. Berger? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Heiss? No witnesses today. Thank you. Closing comments? Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, it seems that um, Ms. Double and Mr. Patterson are participating in services as needed and are continuing to be cooperative with the department. Um, and Mr. Juby is uh, at least starting some of those services as well as the yeah, completed rehab, um, seems to be interested in going to see major further assessments. As it relates to parenting time for Mr. Juby, we are asking the court to continue the suspension of parenting time just pending the trauma assessments and then also more uh, demonstrated sobriety and engagement in those um, Services that we tend to see that demonstrate a commitment to sobriety, such as engagement with AA and NA. Um, the order from the custody matter is dated for October 20, October 10th of 2023, and that was attached to the original petition. Um, and it, um, the finding is, states that father failed to appear for either that hearing or the one prior demonstrating a lack of interest in both Ms. Children and these proceedings. And that is why the court continued to spend parenting time. Um, I generally, when you look at the risk of harm for parenting time, it's not just physical, but also emotional and, and mental well-being. Um, I think that the inconsistency poses that psychological harm that we want to prevent at this time. And so just getting dad to a little more stable um, and consistent with services and participation, seeing uh, the baseline of their attachment and how to move forward, I think um, will help us de develop a plan to progress towards those supervised visits. Uh, with that, we would just ask for a standard 90-day review. Thank you. All right, Ms. Spencer, let's go to you next. Comments? Yes, we would be requesting that um, Austin be able to have supervised visits with his children starting um, as soon as possible, preferably before that trauma assessment actually occurs in August. Um, he has shown that he has um, been sober for the last two months based on his drug tests. He has been in inpatient treatment since then. Um, he testified today that he does wish to see his children as soon as possible. Um, regarding the prior no contact order that was entered in October that was just um, discussed, at that point in time, you know, it seems like Austin probably was not sober and was still struggling with the uh, problems that brought this case about. But like I said, since May, um, he has been sober according to his drug tests. And if the visits were supervised um, and anything inappropriate even started to occur, they could be um, immediately ended. So we don't believe there would be any risk of harm with starting those supervised visits prior to the August assessment. Has your client uh, seen his children despite the no, uh, no. visits? All right, comments, Mr. McFarland? I think my client's concerns have been addressed through testimony. Nothing further. Ms. Berger? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we are asking um, also for another review period 
to allow um, case plan services to be continued and hopefully completed. Um, but I think my client testified um, fairly well um, in relation to the updates that she would like to give in relation to the um, court report and the service plan. So at this time, we are um, just asking for one more review period and hopefully time to complete these service plans. Thank you. All right. Well, the court finds all interested parties for giving notice for today's uh, first regular review hearing. Uh, there were definitely a lot of, uh, there was a lot of exhibits and the report was very thorough. So thank you, Ms. Green, for all your work. Uh, I know this is a fast moving case with obviously three different parents and two sets of children and lots of concerns. So uh, good work, all of you, in undertaking uh, some of the challenges. Uh, Mr. Duke, you got to rehab. That's good news. Um, Ms. Double's doing her best to maintain things and to stay in communication with everybody. Mr. Patterson, the same. So that's good. That's good progress. I can't uh, wait to see what happens in the next report period. I have received some um, of the indications that uh, Native American Heritage is not applicable in this case with regard to the exhibits that were filed today. So you don't have to worry about that, really, that piece anymore. The children are placed uh, with Jeff Patterson of Faith Double. That is the safest and least restrictive under the circumstances that allows them to uh, benefit from services like in-home therapy, which involves both parents and children in the context of the home. So that's a great program. I look forward to the findings on the psychologicals and uh, additional referrals based on that, as well as the trauma assessments. On the request uh, by Mr. Juby for supervised parenting time, I will ask you. I think that I think the trauma assessments are coming up pretty quickly, so we'll ask uh, we'll ask you to wait until that is completed. Uh, but after that piece, uh, I would expect the department to work in some supervised uh, visits for Mr. Juby based on the recommendations and the structure that hopefully will be uh, something the trauma assessor can speak to. So if you could make sure, um, Ms. Grant, that you reach out and when Mr. Doobie's turn is up to talk about uh, his bond and all of those things, please let them know that we're looking for a recommendation to transition him into some supervised parenting time. There is, of course, the program with Renee Moore as well, uh, the reintroductory program. Um, but I do think it's important to, to have him engaged with the CMA services. So that's another piece, Mr. Doobie, that uh, we're going to expect you to, to take up and Accomplish in order to make sure that uh, your time is safe. Okay. So once those things are in place, we'll trust you to implement some supervised parenting time. Thank you, Ms. Brick. All right. Uh, we'll just continue monitoring services and supporting the family in the next report period. I would like to offer to you October 7th and 11 a.m. for our next review. If you can check your calendars, October 7th and 11 a.m. Good for me. For myself and my client, um, it's up in the air, Your Honor, but I can put it on my calendar. And if I'm not available, I'll find coverage. Thank you. All right, we're going to end. All right, very good. All right, so we'll see you all.